good afternoon everyone welcome back to the online series of chapter 1 that is matter in our surroundings yesterday we have talked about matter in our surroundings and we have talked in that we have talked about different states of matter what is the difference between these different states of matter today we are going to learn that whether these three states of matter can be changed can be interchanged or in other words we can say that are these states of matter interconvertible that is the solids can be changed into the liquids and liquids can be changed into the gases and vice versa so there are two factors of course the states of the matter can be interchanged but these depend upon two factors one is temperature and the other is pressure so first we are going to have a look at the effect of temperature on the change of states of matter effect of temperature on the change of states of matter so first for this again we have to do an activity that is we have to take up a beaker then in this beaker we have to this is the beaker this is the wire gauge on which the beaker is clamped off this is the burner this is the tripod stand and you will see that a thermometer is placed inside it and of course there is a stirrer also now we have to put some ice blocks into the beaker this is the clamp stand this is the beaker this is thermometer these are ice cubes this is wire gauge this is the tripod stand this is the bunsen burner this is the setup that you people have to put up and as soon as the bunsen burner is on the temperature of the system starts rising up gradually as and as the temperature of the system starts rising up gradually the particles of the solids that is the ice they start taking up this temperature as heat and they gain up the kinetic energy yesterday we have talked about that the particles of matter when they gain up heat they obtain kinetic energy and they start moving faster so what happens that as soon as the temperature over here is 
uh, rising up due to the Bunsen burner. This heat energy is gained by the particles and they gain up the kinetic energy due to the rise in the heat. They gain up the kinetic energy and start moving up faster. Due to which the forces of attraction, the strong forces of attraction due to which they were strongly bonded with each other, this force of attraction is broken down and the state soon converts from solid to the liquid. That is, you will see that the ice starts melting up into the liquid. Note the temperature till the whole of the ice gets converted into the liquid. You will see that there is no change in the temperature until and unless whole of the ice gets converted into liquid. Why there is no rise in temperature? Why there is no change in the temperature? The reason behind this is that the heat energy which was being used up to break up the force of attraction was consumed in breaking up or overcoming the forces of attraction as a result of which the temperature of the system remained constant till the whole of the ice gets converted into the liquid and this temperature at which the whole of the ice gets converted into the liquid is known as the melting point of ice. The melting point of ice is 273.16 Kelvin. Now again one thing that we have said that why doesn't the temperature rises? As I have said that the whole of the temperature it is consumed in overcoming the forces of attraction uh, present between the particles of the matter. This remains uh, hidden between the particles and as a result of which it is also known as latent heat of fusion. This is the very basic reason. Latent means hidden. The word latent here means hidden. That is, the temperature remains hidden between the particles of solids so that the whole of the uh, uh, forces of attraction present between these particles gets broken up and the whole of the ice gets converted into the liquid without rising the temperature of the system until and unless the whole of the uh, ice gets converted into the liquid. Now again we are going to see, uh, we can see here that when ice that solid have converted into the liquid that is ice has converted into water. Now we want to see that can water be converted into vapors that is can liquid be converted into gaseous state. Again we are going to provide temperature in the form of heat we are, that is we are going to uh, continue up with the experiment we are going to raise the temperature by providing it for a longer time we will see that again the temperature of the system rises up and there comes a point or there comes a temperature at which the particles uh, they gain enough amount of the kinetic energy to break up the forces of attraction present between them and they start moving up far away from one another. This point is known as the boiling point and here now the, vapor, uh, the particles of the liquids they are converted into gaseous form that is now the water gets sta uh, starts getting up converted into the vapors that is solids get converted into the liquids and liquids converts into the gases that is water converts into the vapor state. Again a new concept come over here that is latent heat of vaporization. That is, we have noted down the temperature over here and the temperature of the system remains constant until and unless the whole of the liquid gets converted into the vapors. That is again 
the total amount of the temperature or the total amount of the heat remains hidden in overcoming the forces of attraction present between the particles of the liquid now into vapors and this is known as latent heat of vaporization this these two concepts that is latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization are very very important points now we have seen that temperature plays a very important role in converting the three states of matter that is the solid into the liquid and liquid into the gaseous state now we are going to study the effect of pressure thank you